just having a little fun, little noodling, even though that's not really what we're covering today. I wanted to mention that this Strat will be going away soon, so we'll talk about a little bit about that here in the broadcast today. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Eric Andreas, your guitar sage, and today we're going to be doing a live broadcast called 9 plus 1 equals 1,000. I wanted to say 9 plus 1 equals a million, but I didn't think he'd believe me. And this concept that I'm going to be teaching today, some of you who have been with me for a while, you understand this, or you might believe me when I say that if you know these nine chords and you understand how to use a capo across the guitar neck, then you can literally play millions of songs. I'm saying thousands here just because it's a little bit more believable, but truly millions of songs you can play thousands of hit songs uh, without do knowing anything else other than those easy open chords and using your capo. Now, some folks will say, you know, well, why don't you play bar chords or why don't you make things harder? Well, I have plenty of videos where I make things harder and this is not about ego, it's about playing music. And as soon as ego enters music, it destroys it. So don't let ego, you know, because you can hold a bar chord or something like that, make you think that you're a better player. It's like knowing your bar chords are good. And we want to do that. And uh, there's a lot of complicated things that we can know that will make our playing sound better. But there's also a lot of simple things that we can do too. Why not tackle those things? And then we can get to the complicated things, right? Okay, so let's talk about that in a minute. Oh, from, first off, before I put this away. So this is my personal Fender Stratocaster. I'll tell you a quick little story about it before we begin. It's a custom shop, uh, classic 50s with custom wound pickups. This guitar was purchased uh, through my guitar guru, Greg Ellis. Uh, he is my uh, guitar tech, if you will, and he helps me purchase all my guitars, uh, effects, amplifiers, sets things up, customizes, mods, repairs, whole nine yards. Um, in fact, he was with me when I got my 65 Strat, which is my baby, and, um, and I said to him, I said, I don't like playing out with this one live because, you know, it's nothing to get a drunk guy up on stage jumping around and what have you, and uh, it's happened before, and I'd rather not do it around uh, a very expensive guitar, so uh, a very, very expensive guitar, I should say. So I said, just give me an expensive guitar, one that's, that's, that's nice. This is that the answer to that, because right now I'm not playing out live. Uh, right now I'm just concentrating on lessons and, and what have you. Uh, so I can give this one away, and until I start playing out live again and have a need for it, then... Um, there you go. Then someone can enjoy this guitar, not me. It's going to be going away on November the 4th, and if you want to know more about that, in the description of this video, you're going to see a link that says yourguitarsage.com slash live. If you click on that link, it'll take you to a page, and you can register for free. There's no gimmicks. There's no spam, any of that. That's bull crap. Uh, it's going to take you straight to registration. You can register for the live broadcast that we'll be having on November the 4th. Okay, and um, November the 4th, basically, I'm going to be teaching you five steps. If you know these five things, you're off to the races on guitar, no matter where your level is at, okay? 
Um, and so a little snippet, a little bite of it is what I'm going to be teaching you today. Okay, uh, we're going to be giving a thousands of dollars of other stuff away that day, including courses, unstoppable guitar system, uh, books, and the whole nine yards. Okay, without further ado, let's jump into this. Uh, and by the way, I will be doing a giveaway today. So if you share this video, um, of course, I like your likes and I like your comments. Um, but if you share it, I'm going to be giving away to some lucky winner today. I'm going to be giving away my DVD for the Nashville Number System and one of my CDs. I'll be mailing that out to you. And the Na that Nash Nashville Number System series I did for True Fire Guitar, it's an amazing series that's really going to help you to understand music in a way that you never have before. I promise you, it was a light switch went on for me eight years into my playing. And then that's when I looked at the Nashville Number System and it absolutely blew me away. Okay? All right. So, without further ado, let's jump into this, okay? And by the way, I'll be answering questions both on Facebook and on YouTube. We have 152 people right now watching on YouTube, and we have 32 people on Facebook. So, yay, we're almost up to 200 people. That's pretty cool. I like that. All right. So, let's talk about it. So, hold your questions. Uh, I mean, you could put them you could put them up now, but I won't be looking at them right now. I'll have to scroll back and look back, okay? And I'll be bouncing back and forth between the two. Okay, so let's talk about this really quick. <clears throat> Nine essential chords. Some of you have heard me talk about this before. I may throw in an extra here. I may take one out. We'll see. But usually it's nine chords, and I'll go over them with you, at least by name. I'm not going to show you how to finger each individual chord, so if you're brand spanking new, then you need to take advantage of the free course that I've created for you. The link is in the description of this video as well, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. It'll go into a lot more detail than what we're talking about today, but we are going to be talking about some of this stuff. So, nine essential chords. I'll count them as I go along because, yeah. So, in no particular order, we have E minor, it's one, G, it's two, A minor is three, C is four, D is five, D minor is six, A major is seven, E major is eight, and B7 is nine. Okay, now, you may say to yourself, well, what about the bar chords, and what about this, that, and the other thing? There are those chords, but with the use of the capo and making everything feel like it's in the key of G or the key of C, we're not saying that we have to be in that key, but just to feel like that, and I'll explain that in just a moment. If we do this, okay, then you only, for the most part, 99% of the time will only need those chords. Every now and then you'll need a bar chord, but it's, it's rare. Why is this? I'm going to explain it to you. <clears throat> Track with me. There are 12 different keys, right? If I'm playing in the key of G, which is like G, C, and D, if I use my capo and I put it on the first fret, now I'm playing in the key of G sharp. So now G sharp, C sharp, and D sharp, and so on and so far. It's A, D, and E. And we can just keep going up the fretboard like this. And every single time, we're playing the same formed chords. They look the same but they're different in pitch, right? Because we're raising the capo. It's kind of like having uh, a, compute, a uh, keyboard, like piano keyboard, and tuning it up. So where, where all the white keys are when you're playing in the key of C, but let's say you went to playing C sharp, but you didn't know what sharps and flats to play. And if you had a way that you could electronically tune the, the piano up, that's effectively what we're doing with the capo. And uh, you can do that with most keyboards, okay? So, why would we do this? Because if we can keep everything in the key, in the feel of G or C, then we end up with so many of these chords, okay? Now, I'll show you what I mean by this. So, in the key of G, our chords, our main chords are G, A minor. Um, I'm gonna name them all, okay? But G, A minor, B minor, which is a bar chord, but, but, Trust me, we don't, we don't use it very often. C major, D major, E minor, F sharp diminished, which you're just not going to use very often, and G. So notice, I said there was two chords that we just don't use very often, and that's that diminished chord and the three minor. One, two, three, which is in this case a B minor. We can use it. We do use it. 
but it's not often, okay? So, G, A minor, C, D, E minor are chords. I mean, that's one, two, three, four, five chords that you could use in the key of G and never have to break out a bar chord. Pretty cool, right? Now, in the key of C, key of C is C, look, D minor, we mentioned that we have a D minor from the, the nine essential chords, right? E minor, F major, now that's a bar chord, but we can play it as an open chord, or a mini open chord, if you will, playing strings two, three, four, and we got a G, and we got an A minor. So, right there, that shows you that one, two, three, four, five, six chords now. Oh, and then we have the diminished chord, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna worry about that right now. We could play it, but technically we've got six chords out of the seven chords in C major, and they're all open. Now, what happens when we start going to A major and D major and what have you? Well, then we start running into a lot more bar chords, okay? So there's a reason I'm saying stick to the feel of G and C. Now, what do I mean by feel? Well, if we're playing G, C, and D, that's in the key of G, and if I capo it up a half step, we're no longer in the key of G, but it still feels like the key of G, right? Because I'm playing a G, a C, and a D as far as I can feel, right? This feels the same way. But if we have another musician in the room, they're gonna say, no, that's not a G, it's not a C, it's not a D. You're up a whole step now. So we, so I call that the feel of G or C. And knowing how to play songs in those two keys is absolutely monumental because it will help you to learn so many songs, right? The thousands of songs that I teach, taught more than, I've taught thousands of songs, but just on YouTube alone, probably a thousand songs. Uh, and so, so many times I'm saying, get out your capo, you know, this is, this is how we're going to, to line up these chords today, okay? Now, and I, and I know some of you are saying, yeah, but what about the key of B flat? Yeah, what about the key of F sharp? Challenge me, if, if, if this, what I'm saying to you doesn't make sense and you're like, yeah, but you can't do something in the key of, F sharp or G flat, how are you gonna make that in the key, of, in the feel of G? I'll show you, okay, or in the feel of C. I will show you how to do that. So, but I'll wait for the question because I don't, you guys may be like, oh, I totally understand this, this is great. So if you have any questions about this, you're gonna let me know, okay? Now, how do you know what key you're playing in? Let's say your uh, song's in the key of A and you wanna play it like it's in the key of G. Well, easy enough, here's the, here's the G. And if we want that to sound like an A, we could say G, G sharp, A. So basically we're gonna move that chord up two frets. That means your capo, or the nut, would have to move up two frets. We can't move the nut up, so that's why we have our capo. So we have, here's the nut at zero, here's, we have one and two. So now we hold our G chord. It's not a G chord anymore, it's an A chord, okay? Feels like a G, right? What I mean by feels is it literally tactily feels like a G chord, but it's not. And if we go up another half step now, we're playing an A sharp, but it still looks like and feels like a G, and so on and so forth. Okay, so you do need to know the notes on the fretboard. That's easy enough. I teach that. I've got lots of videos on that. But nonetheless, if you do this in the key of G or C, boom, you're set, and you would literally be able to play in any key, but with these simple feels. And guess what? all the licks are very, very similar. Because listen, the key of G and the key of C are the, close, the most closely related, I should say, in the key of G, C is the most closely related to scale, related scale. In the key of C, G major is the most closely related scale. They're only off by one note. The key of G is, or the key of C is all the white keys on the piano, no accidentals, no black keys, no sharps or flats. So, and that goes C, D, A, or C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, okay? No sharps or flats. Did you hear me say sharp or flat? Nope, because there's no sharps or flats. So in the key of G, we have G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp. If we played it with an F, should be an F sharp, okay? 
And so because of that, when you're playing licks and what have you, the only thing that you have to remember, number one, is what key you're in, but, but once you know what key you're in, is that F will be sharped in the key of G, and it will be flat, or natural, I should say, in the key of C major. Okay, makes sense? So any of your licks that you're doing, all the licks will be similar in where the notes are at, okay? The, the, the notes, the scale, all that's gonna match up as well, with the exception of the F, which will be sharp in the key of G. Uh, more information about this, you can check out my video on chord noodling, which is on YouTube, okay? Just search uh, Your Guitar Sage Chord Noodling, okay? All right, let's get into some questions here, my friends. And um, very quickly, again, anybody who's wanting to win this guitar right here, go to yourguitarsage.com slash live. I'll be giving away my personal Stratocaster away on November the 4th. Super cool, right? And also share this video if you do that after the broadcast. As always, I've been announcing these, by the way, because I know some folks don't believe that I give stuff away all the time. I get that comment every now and then. That's okay. Uh, the world has... Uh, a lot of snake oil salesmen in it. So I understand why you would have a hard time believing that I give as much stuff away that I do, but I do. And then I announce the winners and you can go right through the list and see that they had a comment on there. So if I was lying, then they would be coming after me and saying you're a liar. But I have stuff to give away. I've got lots of guitars and stuff and I love giving stuff away. So trust me, I give tons of stuff away. All right, here we go. Let's get to some questions. Um, I'm gonna be looking on Facebook and YouTube, and I'll start over on YouTube right now. Any questions that you might have for me, let's uh, let's dig into it. And I'm going to zip all the way to the to the beginning of this, okay? Um, okay, so I'm at the beginning here of YouTube, and I'm going to be going super quickly through these. Friends, if you're going to ask a question, put a question mark at the end. That's the way we do it in America. Uh, you put a question mark, and I'm talking to Americans mostly because uh, folks from other countries seem to be doing this. Um, put a question mark at the end, otherwise it looks like a statement and I'm probably gonna go right past it. That's what a question mark does, is it alerts me that there's a question, okay? So I will not be answering any without a question mark, otherwise uh, I'll, it's gonna take, take me forever to go through them. Okay, here we go, and I'm on YouTube. I'm doing well, by the way. Someone just asked me how I'm doing. Fantastic. Uh, how many are from Egypt? What is the capo for? Okay, my friend, the capo is for easily, well, there's a few things you can do with it, but the main reason is for changing keys. So, um, you know, this is the nut. And the nut is basically the zero fret. You can't go anything further than that unless you detuned your guitar, but you can go up. Okay, so what the capo allows you to do is it allows you to essentially move this up as many frets as you want, and then you could be up here and playing in a different key. Why play in a different key? Because when you're playing in a different key, um, maybe your vocal, maybe your vocals are going to be better. Your voice is going to be better suited in a different key for a particular song, or maybe the fingering is going to be easier or something like that. That's why you would want to change keys. Okay. Um, good, good, good. All right. Nice guitar. Yes, thank you. This is a, a this is a Gibson SJ200. It was my favorite guitar. Uh, once I moved to Nashville, I had to have one. I saw a friend who had one. He had a 1969, and I fell in love with it. The sound was gigantic, and I'm and I love it. Are you related to your guitar Parsley, your guitar Rosemary, and your your guitar Time? Indeed. Um, it was funny. Anami, Anam, Anami from YouTube is that a lot of people think it's your guitar's age, which is why I did that bit right there with the... Somebody's bored. Okay, Alexander, if you're bored, there's cat videos and stuff to entertain you. Otherwise, uh, we're here to learn guitar. So, here we go. Other questions. Awesome shirt. Is that weird? No, not at all. It is an awesome shirt. Thank you. Questions, questions, not a lot of, not a lot of questions. Okay, here we go. Here we go, here we go. How can we sign up to win that strat? Uh, link is in the description, yourguitarsage.com slash live. 
So I can use a capo to transcribe chords I can't play. Uh, Bo is saying, can I, can I use the capo to transcribe chords I can't play? I think I know what you mean by that. Transcribing Bo is when, we, when we're writing music down, but or transcribing anything, uh, writing anything down. So I think what you mean is, can you use the capo to play chords, you know, probably bar chords is what you're saying. Yes, that's what it does. If you stay in the key of G or C or the feel of G and C, that will help a ton, okay? This, uh, there's a few principles that if you understand these, then collectively you're gonna, the light's gonna start going on. And a lot of those principles are covered in the free course. Links in the, in the description, yourguitarstage.com slash live, okay? While playing the C, add nine, my nail touches the second string. How to reduce it? Well, cut your nail. Number one, cut your nail. Number two, uh, you, you know, you have to observe your hand. So you know what you're doing wrong. If you look at your hand, if, you're, if, if your knuckles are straight, if, you're not, if there's not a curl to them, if you're not playing on your fingertips, it sounds like you've got some basic fretting issues that you need to deal with, and that's like video three or four in that free video series on how to fret properly. There's some basics that guitar players go for years, and they never learn it, and they just sit there, and they stumble, stumble, stumble across stuff. Imagine if you didn't know that your car needed oil. Or imagine if you didn't know that you were supposed to stay in your lane when you drive. And you just went for years driving like this and people are flipping you off and you're getting in wrecks, you're getting tickets and you're like, geez, I'm just driving, I'm driving. Yeah, you're driving, yeah, you're playing guitar, but there, you could be doing something wrong. A lot of people are doing things wrong because they don't understand those basic principles. That's what that course is there to help you with. And it's free, so check that out. But uh, there's basically three, three or four principles. You know, playing on your fingertips, curling that last knuckle, playing close to the fret. I cover all of that in that course, so check that out, okay? Uh, any advice on speeding up the 16th notes? On speeding up 16th notes. Uh, you know... Uh, Brogan, I've got lots of videos on this and increasing speed and what have you, but one thing that you can do to practice is is to do like a... So if you're, if you're working with a metronome, like... That's one practice that I use that's very, very effective because it allows you a minute, a second, a few seconds to gain your composure instead of playing a lick very fast and then a really long run. Obviously, typically, we're able to play shorter runs faster than we can a really, 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 really long run. So important to take a break like that where I'm playing eighth notes and then 16th notes. So that's one thing. Also working with a metronome and just slowly speeding it up. If you think about this, always go for accuracy. Never think about speed. Speed happens. Speed is a byproduct of knowing what you're doing, okay? So as you get better at a particular something, you can do it faster, but not until you understand the concept. Uh, people want to leapfrog straight to speed without accuracy, and that doesn't work. So um, to, to wherever you're at is where you're at. I want to be a faster player. I don't know of anybody out there who doesn't want to be a faster player. So get that out of your head that you're going to like arrive this one day and be like, I play as fast as I want to. It's never going to happen. You're always going to be searching for the next speed technique or what have you, you know. Um, so with that being said, just, you know, rest where you're at, but push yourself, you know, and by doing that, working with a metronome, and also more practice is gonna get you there, that more accuracy, okay? Great question. Every time I use my capo and then stop, my guitar is slightly out of tune, is that normal? Uh, Max, it can be, yeah. Um, some capos, in fact, I've got a few of them here. Some of them have built-in, let's see this one, um, have built-in tuners, like this guy has a built-in tuner, and it's made specific, where's the, okay, there it is. So it has a, a built-in tuner and putting that on your guitar and then if your guitar is out of tune, it'll allow you to, to just kind of tweak it. Pretty cool. So yes, indeed, capos do that because they're pressing the strings down. If your action's really high, it's gonna do it even more, okay? All right. 
<laughs> God, some of your guys' comments are amazing. All right, yeah, I'm getting lots of lots of really good questions. Okay, um, how do I find the chord of any song by improving your ear? Watch my videos on ear training. Go to YouTube, type in your guitar stage ear training. Uh, there's not a one thing that I could tell you that you're gonna be like, oh, okay, that's it, now I'm off to the races. You have to develop your ear, but you do that with individual notes. So, open another tab, go to YouTube, type in your guitar stage ear, and I'll show you exactly how to do that. Okay, have I, uh, have I seen the app Musician? Picked it up the other day, but feels it's slow for my level of playing. Uh, yeah, Musician is, uh, at best, it's kind of a toy. Uh, is it helpful? Of course, any amount of time on, on the instrument is helpful, but it's, it's for, you know, for just in the beginning when you're just getting the basics. And if it's working for you, then do it. You know, ignore what I'm saying. If it's working for you, do it. But it's only going to take you so far, for sure. That's just the truth of the matter. What kind of basic music theory should I learn in addition to learning guitar on YouTube? Start with the free course, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. It's going to lay that foundation down where you can't mess up. If you don't do that, you're just searching for videos on YouTube and you haven't built that foundation, you're going to screw yourself because, trust me, it, you've got to understand that there are, that you're stacking things up, okay? But then also on YouTube, type in your guitar sage theory because I have a lesson specifically addressing what you just said there and it's basically like you know the five theory bits that you need to know i'm a big fan of taking something and taking um just what you need to know to get going first off and then you can add all the other stuff later on uh, there's a rule called pareto's rule p-a-r-e-t-o apostrophe s pareto's rule and basically it says that with 20% of the knowledge of a particular subject, you can get, you can do 80% of whatever it is. Let's say it's juggling. Let's say it's, um, sorry, I'm adjusting that mic. Um, let's say it's juggling or guitar or drums. If you know 20% of the good stuff, the stuff that, uh, say, a drummer would teach you, a good drum teacher or a good guitar teacher would say, you know these things first. Like I'm telling you now, know these nine chords before you learn thousands of chords. Because knowing these nine chords and knowing how to use your capo is going to allow you to play millions of songs. Where you otherwise, the other way you could do it is say, well, I'm going to, my ego is going to take over and I'm going to learn thousands of chords. Great. You're going to be the guy who knows thousands of chords and don't know how to use them. Perfect. Okay. That'll be a fun gig to go to. Don't be that guy. Be the guy that goes on stage, even if you know two chords, but do them well. Do them really well, okay? There's no uh, glory in knowing thousands of chords and not knowing how to use them. With this method, what I'm showing you here and all the methods that I teach, I'm showing you how to use them right away. Make sense? Okay. So watch that. So on YouTube, type in Your Guitar Stage Theory, and you're going to find that video there, okay? Can you play a song in different keys using the capo? Yes, that's exactly what it's for. So if you're in the key of G, bam, you're in the key of G, move it up. Now you're in the key of G sharp. Now you're in the key of A, etc., etc. Okay. <clears throat> and by the way, all this capo stuff I'm talking about, including a really nice detailed color-coded PDF along with all the other videos that I teach in that free series, you'll see one that'll teach you, one that'll a cheat sheet basically on how to change keys, how to know the feel of the song, whole nine yards. So if you're looking for that, it's in the free course. Okay, uh, where should I start when I try to teach my wife how to play guitar? Start at the free course, video one, start there. Always start there. It's the only way that you can step, I say the only way. It's the way that is gonna get you there the quickest. You're not skipping any steps, but you're not doing anything that you're not gonna be using at the moment, okay? Have her start right there, sit with her, uh, we'll have her watch the video, and then if she needs more explanation, join me for the live broadcast, or you can answer her probably. How do you decide, decide the key of the song you wanna play and where to place the capo? It's a great question. So if I know that a song's in the key of G, well then there's no use for a capo, or if it's in the key of C, there's no use for a capo. But if I'm hearing that, that the tonal center is a G sharp, well, I know I'm not going to want to play this chord and this chord. I'm not going to want to play all these crazy bar chords. Even these, I don't want to play them. So I'm going to capo at the first fret, and now I'm playing 
in the key of G sharp, but I'm playing all those same chords. So typically, if the tonal center is a sharp or flatted note, then you know to use the capo. Also, if it's in the key of A or D or E, it would behoove you to try to put it into the, the, the feel of G or C, okay? Would help a lot. Uh, e, D, and E, D, and A have lots of, have some open chords, but not nearly as much as G and C, okay? Again, all that's covered in that free course. Um, okay, uh, do, you, do you retune your guitars after you put the capo on? Uh, sometimes, sometimes one needs to. In this case here, with this guitar, it's pretty much in tune. That note's sharp, so I'm just gonna stretch that string. That one's sharp. And that happens a lot of times from the, the capo. So now if I, that's still fine. The, the, better, the better quality guitars will stay in tune better or if they're set up more, if they're set up correctly where the strings aren't too high. But uh, yes, you, you, I do have to tweak every now and then, you know. Okay, any, recommend, any recommendations on how to, I, I any recommendation on how to begin identifying keys by ear? Yes. Listen to, and I have videos on this, okay? Uh, type in your guitar sage, key, K-E-Y. Uh, so the first chord of the song and the last chord of the song usually point towards the tonal center. I always say that finding the tonal center is a little bit like being a detective. We're looking for cues. We're looking, we're looking for clues, okay? Um, you see somebody laying on the ground, there's a gun, there's blood. One might assume that that person's been shot. That's a good surmise, right? Uh, but also, uh, it could be that they were stabbed and there's a gun just laying next to them. Uh, you might assume that since the gun's laying next to them, they shot themselves. Maybe not. Maybe it was somebody else. As a detective, you've got to get lots of clues in order to, to bring it all in. Now, as you get better as a detective, as a musician, what will happen is you won't have to have as many clues for you to be pretty darn sure. If you've seen a particular crime scene 800 times and you come across the same crime scene again, you're going to be like, it was this, it was suicide, it was wh whatever. So same thing with your, when you're playing guitar, there are certain tell, telltale clues that if you grab a hold of those, they will tell you what the tonal center is. Usually, okay, now again, usually the first chord of the song. He said I love you till I die. You know, that's uh, he stopped loving her today. That starts on a G. Usually the first riff of a song or the first few moments of a song are introducing you to the key, the feel, those sorts of things. It's kind of like the introduction to a movie. They can't just jump into the plot. They have to kind of warm you up to the moment. You're just watching advertisements and eat popcorn. You need a second to readjust to get used to the movie. Same thing with a song. In the beginning, they're adjusting you to the key and what have you. It's rare that a song starts off right away in a different key and then changes. Okay, uh, same thing with the last chord of the song. Usually, you're gonna have a, a final cadence. And it's gonna have that sound of finality. Okay, if it doesn't have that sound, then chances are it's ending on some other chord other than the tonic. Those are the two easiest ways to do it. Then you can uh, start taking your chords if you know how your chords are laid out. You can say, well, I know in the key of G, there's a G, a C, and a D. So it's probably in the key of G because the key of C has a C, G, and D, D minor. Ah, that points towards the key of C. So those are the ways to help you to determine the key. You gotta know the, the chord families, that's helpful. Also covered in the free PDF that I give you in the free course, yourguitarstage.com slash live. I mention it a lot because it's the panacea for what ails you, okay? It is the medicine for what ails you, okay? Alrighty, alrighty. Which string gauge should I use as a beginner for acoustic and electric? Um, for electric, nines are good, you know, because they, they, you can still bend with them. Uh, tens are going to be a little bit thick in the beginning. And for acoustics, I, I say don't bend on them as much. Go with thicker strings. It makes it sound, uh, it's better intonated. The guitar is going to sound, stay in tune better, that sort of thing. Can I use a capo while I uh, have a different tuning than standard? Yes, most assuredly. It's gonna bring everything up uniformly, 
okay? So if you're in drop D tuning and you move it up, now you're gonna be in uh, drop D tuning, but you'll, you're gonna be a whole step up. Everything's gonna be a whole step up. So it moves everything uniformly up, okay? The D fingering position just won't stick. What are some exercises that I could do to help with that muscle memory? Uh, playing that chord over and over again, Emmanuel, <clears throat> take two chords and go back over to that D chord, C chord to D chord, C chord to D chord. The only thing is it's not sticking because you haven't done it enough and your anxiety or frustration about it is greater than the amount of practice you've put in. That happens 100% of the time when we feel frustrated. Uh, you know, you might think that you've done enough practice for that D chord, but you haven't. Uh, the proof's in the pudding. If you don't, if, it, if it's not committing to memory, you just haven't played it enough. That's all there is to it. So the exercise is playing the D chord, not some other exercise. It's playing the D chord and then straying away from it, going to another chord, C, coming back to the D, C, D, C, D, C, D. Then going D, G, D, G, D, G, that sort of thing. And eventually it's going to happen. Also, to be observant of your fingers, where they're landing on each string. Say it out loud, observe it, and that's going to help you to understand. It's going to commit it to memory. Whatever we put in our conscious mind, it comes out in our, in our subconscious mind, okay? I'll say it again. Whatever we put in our, to our conscious mind, it comes out in our subconscious mind. So if you're sitting here consciously looking at this chord, then later on when you're just playing on stage, it's going to happen more quickly than if you hadn't done that because you're committing it, you're imprinting it into your brain essentially. How high do the strings have to be from the fretboard? Uh, that can't even be answered uh, technically because every guitar is different and every person is different. Uh, if it's uncomfortable for you, probably needs to be adjusted. See a guitar luthier uh, or a guitar repair person in your town. For example, um, do you place the capo for, for the chord for G or C to play a song? Um, I can't answer that, James, because I, not enough information there. But yeah, you use the capo and then you can play in whatever key you're looking for. Uh, what would you recommend for the first guitar pedals to purchase? Currently have a, a Boss Master and a Hardwire DL8 looper pedal. Um, so I cover this in lots of videos on YouTube. Type in Your Guitar Sage Pedals. But for me, the OCD Distortion made by Full Tone is my number one pedal to go through, go to. And then uh, my next pedal, at least, honestly, maybe even before that, is the Line 6 M5. It's, it's literally like a hundred and something pedals in one, and it's like 125 bucks. Get those two pedals, the best two pedals that you could buy, in my opinion. Uh, any advice on string bending on an acoustic versus an electric? It's harder on an acoustic. It's really hard on an acoustic. The strings are, are thicker. The action's higher. It's more difficult, okay? So, any advice? Yeah, thinner strings, but that's also going to affect your intonation. So typically on, I don't bend on, on acoustics because I like thicker strings and I don't want to tear my fingers up. It's painful, makes it to where it's not fun playing the rest of the day, so I just don't do it. And you'll see most people don't do it. They don't, it's, it's a different animal, uh, the acoustic guitar is, than the electric guitar. So um, you can do it, but again, lighter strings. Uh, okay. I know some of these I'm skipping because there's so many questions and they're happening so, so quickly. Okay. Uh, third, sir, thank you. Uh, the capo on the second fret makes a G chord into an A sharp. What does it make to the C and D chord? Um, so the capo on the second fret makes the G chord an A. That's an A. And so the C chord would be a D and the D chord would be an E. Just think about it, you're moving up a whole step, so all your letters in the alphabet are going up a whole step. So a G will become a G, G sharp, A. A C chord will become a C, C sharp, D, right? A D chord will become a D, D sharp, E. So you just have, you work, you work it up like that. Make sense? All right, great questions. All right, I'm gonna bump over to Facebook. I feel bad for my folks over there because, um, uh-oh, I'm not plugged in here, and I'm gonna run out of batteries. Um, hang in there with me. Two seconds, friends. I've got to plug this in because I'm seeing my laptops giving me signals like, what are you doing, bro? Okay. And I don't want to, I don't want to bail on you guys. All right. All right. I'm going to pop over really quickly to Facebook because those folks are feeling neglected over there. All right. Again, I'm looking for only those with a question mark in the end. Hey Sage, is a tuner app 
on mobile as effective as a tuner placed on the headstock of the guitar? Yes, most certainly. They're, they're very accurate. Will clipping a capo on my headstock affect the electronic tuner? Just curious if it dampers the vibration. No, it should not. I do it all the time. And no, it does not. Are there any headphone amp plugs that have a metronome included? Are there any headphone amp plugs that have a metronome included? Hmm, I don't know. I don't think so. Not that I know of. Um, there are smaller devices, yes, like the Zoom. I take that back. Yes, there are some, but they're kind of the higher end ones, maybe around 100, 150 bucks. Um, like the Zoom model, there's others. And um, most assuredly, yes. The answer is yes. Okay. Should I buy a 45 play about a year? Should I buy a 45 play about a year? Uh, a J45. Um, I don't know. If you got the money for one, it's a great guitar. J45s are, are great. So yeah, sure. If you got the money for it, do it. It's a great guitar. Is that an American-made custom shop Strat? Gay, uh, gay, this is a MIM. It's a made in Mexico uh, custom shop. I'm pretty sure it's made in Mexico, which if you understand the hierarchy of all that, uh, it goes American and then Mexican right underneath that. And then I think Japanese and Korean, like as far as the quality that they're putting into it. With that being said, you'll see a ton of guys playing uh, Mexican strats. They're great. They're, they're just great strats. I've owned lots of them. I've owned Americans too. And honestly, between the two, I wouldn't know the difference from playing. And I've been playing for quite a while. So a lot of people get caught up with all that stuff. And honestly... Uh, you know, I've played thousands of, I've played guitars that were worth thousands of dollars that played like crap, and I've played them that were $100 that played great. So, it, you know, watch videos one and two of the free series, yourguitarsage.com slash 30, links in the description of this video, um, because if you do that, you'll understand what to look out for in a guitar without getting all caught up in is the top laminate and this, that, and this kind of wood and everything else. Those are, those are things that are important to know later on if you hear a difference, but bottom line, people get so caught up in that stuff and bottom line, how's the guitar sound and feel? That's what it comes down to and can you afford it? Everything else doesn't really matter. Laminate, top, uh, you know, it's like, yes, I have guitars with both and most of the time a solid top this is the top of the guitar, the front, uh, is going to sound better than a laminate top, but not always. And I guarantee you that a lot of times if you just close your eyes and no one tells you what it is, you're not going to know the difference anyhow. So I'm saying know that stuff. It's fine. It's good to know. But um, let your ear and your hands tell you whether guitar is good or not. Have you ever had a capo that has adjustable, uh, that's adjustable per string? Yes, I have one of those. It's called the um, this one right here. This is called. The, this is an adjustable capo, and you can see it's got little um, little bits and pieces here that I can kind of take in and out, and so I can push down on some strings and not on others. That's great if you want to go for like a special kind of tuning, if you will, uh, without tuning your guitar any differently. And yeah, they're pretty cool. Uh, what is your opinion of s uh, short scale versus long scale? Uh, I cover this in my video, Vicky, uh, about the Les Paul versus the Stratocaster, and you have different scales there. And, uh, you know, my opinion is not much. I mean, when I pick up the two guitars, I don't feel much of a difference. Some people, they get so... Agno uh, I should say I'm agnostic in regards to guitars. I, I love all guitars. So I'm not like, oh, just a Strat guy or just a Gibson guy. Um, so with that being said, uh, you know, the, the, the scale length does, de you know, it changes some uh, what you're doing. So for instance, a longer string length, right? The 25.4 is a longer string length. So the longer something is, the bigger something is, the, the deeper sound it makes, right? So a shorter string, that's why when we go up the string, we're shortening the string length, and it goes, it's going up in pitch. That's why the thinner strings are also higher in pitch. So the longer the scale length, the, the, um, the deeper that string is gonna naturally sound. With that being said, once you tune it up to pitch, it doesn't matter. But what you have to do is, since it's, since it's 
naturally a deeper sounding string, you have to make it tighter to make it in pitch, if that makes any sense. It's only a minute amount, but when you're bending on those instruments, you'll find that, um, that typically the strings are tighter and you have to bend a little bit harder. Okay, was A minor one of your nine? I don't remember seeing it. Yes, it was, and you'll use it a lot. In your nine chords, why no C minor or G minor? Uh, Paul, because they're bar chords, and I say that you, if you stick to the key of G and C, you don't use, well, you don't, wouldn't have either of those chords anyhow. So um, I'm trying to make it easy for folks where they can just play these open chords. Um, I mean, in, in that case, Paul, why not say, why not C sharp minor and D minor? And you know what I mean? We could go on. There's a, a myriad of other chords that I haven't mentioned there. The reason not those nine chords is because they're open, they're easy, and they're easily used in the two most popular keys, G and C. All right, good questions. What... Um, Hey Sage, would putting a capo and taking it off the guitar get it out of tune? Yes, it will, it can. It can do that. All right, great great questions on YouTube or on uh, Facebook here. Uh, playing an electric uh, ATM, I have been learning for about a year. I'm looking into buying an acoustic. Any recommendations for a mid-priced guitar? Yeah, check out Epiphone Master Build. M-A-S-T-E-R-B-I-L-T. They're the best acoustic guitars money can buy, in my opinion, uh, for, for the money. You know, it's a lower price. You can find them used on Craigslist and eBay for like three, four hundred bucks. Are Takamini acoustic guitars any good? Yes, I have one and I love it. So it's, it's a great guitar. I don't like it as much as my other guitars, but uh, I do like it. And it's a great, I, I use it a lot for live or I used to use it a lot for live. It's my, my, my beater guitar. Um, yeah, if I was playing on a boat with a lot of salt water and stuff like that, probably wouldn't bring this guitar, but I would bring my Takamini. Uh, what time will the November 4th live broadcast on UGS be? Uh, a reasonable hour for Europeans? Well, I guess that depends on what part of Europe you're in, Tom. Um, it's going to be on at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. Just hit the link that says yourguitarsage.com slash live. That'll get you there. And if you don't, if you're not there for it, Tom, it will be, uh, it'll be recorded. So you'll be able to watch it later on. Okay. Well, clipping my capo on the head. Okay. So we've been over that. Okay. Excellent. Heading back over to YouTube for some questions. How can I easily cope up at playing and singing at the same time? How can I easily, okay. How, okay, watch my video on YouTube, type in your guitar sage, singing and playing. Okay, watch that video for more detail. But essentially what's happening is you're doing several things at once. You're playing chords, you're strumming, you're singing a melody, you're trying to remember lyrics, you're trying to remember inflection, all this other stuff. And what happens is each one of those things is another ball that you're throwing into the mix as you're juggling. And when it becomes too overwhelming, it, none of it sounds good. So what you need to do is parse some of that back. Get really, really good at singing. Get really, really good at playing your guitar. And what I mean by that is during the day, it doesn't like not lifetime, I mean, you can do that. But what I'm saying is sit down, if you're learning a new song, learn the song by just playing guitar first. Then learn it by singing. Just be good at those things separately. Then bring the two together. Another great video to watch for the psychology of that is on YouTube, type in Your Guitar Sage um, Tightrope or Unicyclist. So I talk about this particular fella who's a, uni a juggling unicyclist on a tightrope. He's doing all these different things at once, but he learned them separately. And if you understand this concept, you can break anything apart. The hardest song you can break apart and you can do. But you gotta understand that concept. You gotta know when you're in the in the thick of it. You gotta know when you're in, in the middle of the forest and you're and you're you're your own worst enemy, right? You're sitting there trying to sing and you're forgetting lyrics and you're forgetting chords and stuff. You're trying to do too much and it's only gonna frustrate you and make music not fun. Instead, why not make it fun and learn that guitar, that guitar part, and then come back and learn the the um, the singing part. Learn the guitar part, then learn the singing part, okay? There you go. How do we change keys of a song to match our singing vocal range? Perfect, perfect uh, great question there. Um, so what you wanna do is, 
you know, if you have a particularly low or particularly high voice, then figure out where your weak point is. So like typically that's going to be in the chorus. That's when the, the melody soars. So go to the chorus, sing the chorus. If it sounds fine, sing the verse. And if that sounds fine, then you're in a good key. If you go to the chorus or the highest note of the song, wherever that's at, if it's too high for you, then change the key, okay, with your capo. Um, if it's too low for you, then bring it up. Make sense? Uh, but if the lowest note is too low for you, then bring that up. But basically, you're, you're looking for what your range is. And if you find out what your range is, if that note's too high, then you got to bring that. They're going to bring it all down. If it's if the note's too low, you got to bring it up. If you got a note that's too low and too high, then you need to increase your range or change it, pick a different note. Okay. Great question. What are some of the easy beginner songs to play when learning to play and sing at the same time? Uh, Robert's asking. Robert. Watch any of my songs on YouTube. Um, I'm teaching beginner songs. I'm teaching you uh, songs that are easy. If I can play them and sing them at the same time, then they're fairly easy. Uh, but right off the top of my head, um, he stopped loving her today. I mean, I don't even know what genres or anything like that that you like, so um, it's really hard to just throw out a song, right? He stopped loving her today. How about that one? Uh, Folsom Prison Blues, that's a really good one. So, but watch any of my videos on YouTube. I, I make them very simple. There are old, many old hymns I love to sing. I can pick out the notes of the musical staff. How can I figure out which chords to use in order to make it a chord melody? Uh, Bonnie, in the free course that I keep mentioning, yourguitarstage.com slash 30, there is a schematic that tells you the notes and the chords of every key, or at least of the the main keys, not the sharp and flat keys. That's easy to figure out, just use your capo. Um, but it tells you all the chords of each one of the keys, major, minor, diminished, all that. And so if you, the chords and the melodies will match. So if you're reading this old hymn and the key signature, that'd be a nice thing to know too, because the key signature will tell you what key you're in right away. If you see no sharps or flats, you're in the key of C. So you would know that those chords are C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, B diminished. If you saw one sharp that's in the key of G, you would know the chords are G, A minor, B minor, C, D, E minor, F sharp, G. Uh, so knowing that is, is really going to help. Um, thank you, Turbo. E is the dude. Okay, what apps do you recommend for tabs and lyrics so I can have all in place and make easier to use? Ken, um, even though I don't love the company, ultimate-guitar.com, uh, they've got a great app for that. Uh, it's a little pricey sometimes, but um, I think there's one version that might be even free. So check into those apps, but Ultimate Guitar, UG, uh, if you're looking on the App Store. All right, I'm backing up here uh, to some other questions on YouTube. How can I ease? Okay, we, we did that one. Eric, can you recommend a good looper pedal? Yeah. Um, let's go to the pedal cam right here, and you can see. I've got a... Um, I like to use these Ditto pedals. So these guys right here, you're going to see. Um, I have videos on these. They're a small form factor, so it's only one little guy there. And easy enough. Uh, one button allows you to record, allows you to overdub, allows you to stop it, allows you to um, erase. I mean, just literally that right there. And so I like that small form factor. I, I really dig that, okay? So the Ditto, that's made by TC Electronic. They have a Ditto 2, which is a little bit more highfalutin. But again, uh, you know, before you get, you know, thrown off course by all the different technologies and what have you, figure out what you need. And there's a ton of pros using these Ditto pedals. Uh, so go with what the pros are using, right? That's going to not get you in a bad place. All right, so a little off topic when playing a 145 chords with pen, minor scale sounds good with this progression, the scale of one chord overall or the scale for each chord. Thanks, Robert. Okay, Robert, I think I know what you're asking. You're, I think you're asking, should you change scales per chord? And I'm saying it can be done, uh, but it usually sounds very disjunct. If you like jazz, that's kind of like the jazz sound. Um, but 
Um, no, I'm saying stick to one scale. It just sounds more melodic. And especially if you learn how to use that one scale really well, and you're observant about the chords as they're being played behind you, that's going to help a ton. Okay, um, I'm going to get some more questions here really quickly, folks. Those that share this video after the broadcast, we're going to be looking for a winner. We do this every week, and I'll be giving away one of my DVD of the National Number System, which is very, which goes hand in hand with what we're talking about today, and my CD. I'll be sending that out to some lucky winner today. Um, also, November 4th, we're going to be doing a massive live broadcast. We're going to be give, giving away thousands of dollars worth of goodies, including this, my personal Fender Stratocaster. It's a custom shop, 50s classic with hand-wound custom pickups. A uh, lot of love being put into that guitar right there. And I'm going to be giving it away on November the 4th. How about that? Um, is there anyone who cannot play the guitar? No, absolutely not. Um, there are guys on YouTube with no arms playing with their feet. I've seen people play with their mouth. I've seen, I've seen people lay their guitar down like this and play it. There is no one that cannot play guitar. I suppose if you had no limbs whatsoever, you might have an issue, but chances are there's some guy on YouTube that's figured it out. So um, I have um, one of my students who writes me a lot. She is... I don't know if she's in Iraq or where she's at, but she's in the Middle East, and she can hardly move. She definitely can't move for her lower half, and I see her strumming, and she's got a tube, and she's playing, and she sends me videos all the time. She's amazing, and uh, and she's sitting there playing, and it's just no excuses. If you want to do something, you do something. Otherwise, if, if you like excuses and that makes you feel good, I'm not talking about you specifically. Um, come on, I'm talking about people in general a uh, lot of excuses when they when they just bottom line don't want to work and um, that's just not really a good attitude right so we got to get a better better attitude and focus on what it is we want to do and then do those practices and get good at it you know okay all right all right all right all right um, another question just came in if I have a capo and the at the second fret and playing the feel of G, then the bass player should be on playing an A. Yeah, correct. Good, you got it. Nice, perfect. Um, I thought I bookmarked your, your lessons. Okay, and we just posted that link right there. Yourguitarstage.com slash 30. Do you have the schematic for that setup? For, if you're talking about my pedal board, no, well, no, I don't have a schematic for it, but if you go to YouTube and you type in your Guitar Sage pedal board, I have a pedal board tour specifically of this. I talk about the order, I talk about why I have two ditto pedals, um, I talk about the whole enchilada, the looping system and, and everything in there. So yeah, check that out. Okay, bouncing back over to Facebook. Uh, let's see, we got... 111 on, on YouTube, thank you, friends. And on uh, Facebook, everybody's hanging in there, too. We've got 34 people, so great. Okay, so um, questions, here we go on the... Now, all of a sudden, there we go. Okay, here are my questions. Can you use a, a capo on an electric guitar? Yes, you can, and I don't... I've got one here, I think, somewhere. Um, a shub capo, S-H-U-B-B, -B, or any adjustable capo. Let's see, do I have any adjustable ones in here? Yeah, this one is made by Planet Waves, and this is adjustable. And uh, so it's adjustable, and it's the one that has the tuner on it, and it's a clip-on. So it's kind of multifaceted. What I mean by adjustable is the spring is adjustable because on electrics, you typically don't want as much pressure as on acoustics because strings are thinner, action's lower, plays differently and uh, you know necks usually a little bit thinner or thicker on an acoustic so um, for all those reasons you want an adjustable capo preferably for an electric and you want to just get it to where it just barely presses the strings down if your action's too high you're going to have an issue as well okay i'm changing the strings while listening and it's hard on the guitar taking the pressure off the strings 
Uh, is it hard to take the pressure off the strings all at once? No, it's not. This is a myth that people have said for years, uh, but it's just not true. Is it going to relieve the neck a little bit? Yes, a little bit. If you left it off for a long time, then the neck would relieve a little bit, but as soon as you put the strings back on, it's gonna start going back to normal again. And I say normal, normal's actually when it's off. Because you think about it, this wood did not have strings on it as it was growing up, as it was a wee lad, as it was a sapling, as it was a tree, okay? And when you go to these guitar factories and they're making necks, they don't assemble the guitar all at once. There's a guy making necks, there's a guy making bodies, and these necks will just sit in a barrel with no strings on them. Oh my God, what's gonna happen? Nothing's gonna happen. It's just gonna sit there, it's a neck. And then when you put it on the guitar, then things are adjusted and that sort of thing, and then everything's set up uh, the way you want it to be, okay? Great question, Paul. Playing on and a lot, but I, I understand why people think that, you know? Okay, um, all right, popping back over to YouTube. Here we go. Mm, 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 mm. And um, what is the rec? Uh, what key is recommended for large group songs like Amazing Grace? Um, I mean, unless people are um, unless people are needing a particular key, just start off in G, start off in C because those are easy and they sound nice on the guitar, and um, those are, those are the ones that are gonna gonna work the best in my opinion. Um, and, and two, you know, you say a song like Amazing Grace. If it's Amazing Grace, then that may be one that we could say, okay, well, this range is a pretty good range. We'd have to analyze it. But like another song is going to be to something totally different. I've heard people say, man, G is the key that I sing best in or C is the key. Well, that's only half the information. It's like what, it's like you could have a song that's in the key of G that has a song that, that has a note that's in the stratosphere that's like Mariah Carey whistle tone stuff. And you're not gonna be able to sing that. I don't care if it's in the key of G, right? So like, it depends on the song and the range within the song, where what key you're gonna put it in. Does that make sense? Does the string gauge matter depending on the number of frets? No, it has nothing to do with the number of frets. Uh, Steven, uh, okay, so somebody's saying, is frustration normal in the learning process? Triv is saying, not only is it frustrating in the, in the in, it's normal in the learning process, we're always learning. So I've been playing for close to 40 years now and it's still frustrating at times because you see somebody doing something uh, maybe younger than you or with less experience or whatever, you know, and your ego starts telling you, well, gosh, where, why, where are you? Why aren't you there? Um, so yeah, it's frustrating. It's frustrating for all if they're being honest with themselves. But what I find is this, you gotta figure out where you're at on the continuum, okay? The continuum, it's like a line of where you've been, where you've come from, where you're going. The beginning, you're at the beginning of that continuum, playing guitar, you're just starting off. You're, you're not good. No one starts off being good. No one starts at the middle of the continuum. I don't care if you're Jimi Hendrix or Eddie Van Halen. You don't start there, you start at the beginning. I don't care what it is you're starting off doing. Being a lawyer, being a chef, being a guitar player, you gotta start at the beginning. Great place to begin at the start. Um, and so you're going to learn all these things in the beginning and it is frustrating at first, but as you get going and you start realizing what I did after just a couple years is I said, gosh, anything that I really set my mind to on this instrument, I can do. Doesn't mean I've done it, but I know that the principle is there and I could do it. Anything I see another guitar player do, I could do if I practice like them. If I wanted to be as good as Hendrix or Eddie Van Halen or Zach Wilder, name any wild guitar player you want to. I could do it. I could be as good as all of them put together. Ooh, that's a bold statement. If I practice as much as all of them collectively. Do you understand what I'm saying here? So it has to do with practice. And if I want to be as good, if you want to be as good as them, you can. There's nothing stopping you other than, other than you. You're the controller of your time, right? So if you want to be that, you can be that. You need to have the resources. Hopefully I can help you with that. And you need to put in the time to get good. But yes, frustration, 100% normal. If you weren't getting frustrated, I would say you're not normal. You need to be institutionalized. No, I don't know. It's, it's normal, okay? Did you say heavier strings better on acoustic for tone? Yeah, and better for intonation, for sure. I was, I was waiting for you to come on this morning. Somehow I missed your start time. What is your start time in California? I don't know. I'm not in California. It's um, now. It's now. Uh, I think... I'm two hours ahead of California. So, 
It's uh, so we started at 11 a.m. It's 9 a.m. Cali time. Okay, what is the best way about miking up an acoustic or converting the acoustic to be an electric acoustic? Is there better ways than others? This particular pickup is an LR Bags Anthem. It's the best pickup that you can put in, in, in an acoustic guitar. It's about 300 bucks. It's pricey, but it's an amazing pickup. It has a microphone built into it. When I plug this into my sound system or take a $1,000 mic and put it on it, I always end up going with the built-in microphone or the built-in pickup, which I've never done that with any built-in pickup because they always sound bad. This one is exceptional. Uh, so with that being said, that's the number one way I would say to do it especially if you're playing out live. If you don't have the money for that and you have a microphone, then um, miking the guitar at about here or about the 12th fret, um, maybe about that far off of the guitar, you know, six inches, um, that is going to get a good overall take of the guitar. If you point it too close to the sound hole, it's going to be too boomy, too much towards the neck, it's going to be too too uh, bright, you're not going to get those nice low ends, but if you put it right about the 12th fret, you're going to get a nice overall sound of the guitar. And if it's backed off a little bit, it's not just direct and getting this sound, it's getting the whole instrument too far back and it's obviously you're catching room noise and those sorts of things. Um, okay, great question. Aside from changing strings, what kind of cleaning and maintenance should we do on an acoustic guitar and how often? I hardly ever do anything on my guitars, hardly ever. You can do it, but it doesn't really need to be maintained as long as you're not like, I don't know, like getting food on your guitar or something. Even then, it's like, unless it was like acidy food, you're going to be fine. A little bit of sweat's fine. A little bit of dust is fine. Um, you know, uh, there are, you know, I just use water and maybe uh, I use an essential oil called thieves. Yes, like someone's stealing something. Uh, it's basically, basically like a, a disinfectant, but it also cleans really well. And uh, just with some water, it's great. But just use water. It's totally fine. Light bit of water. But there are some cleaners out there and what have you, and uh, you can use those as well. But I just don't like them. I don't like the way they smell, all that stuff. Does the string gauge matter depending on the number of frets? Okay, we've been over that one. Okay, gonna bounce back over to, I'm gonna bounce back over to um, Facebook here in just one moment. Uh, from India, nice. Okay, someone's asking here about how do I get into fingerstyle and who should I look to as references? I mean, I touch, I teach a ton of fingerstyle stuff. Um, start, Samuel, start with the free course, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. I have a primer there for understanding the proper way to finger pick. Uh, exercises, lots of exercises for you in there as well with PDF uh, attachments and the whole nine yards. And it's free, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. Just, uh, links in the description of the video. Um, so I teach you how to do that, okay, with lots of exercises. So check that out. And then later on, I have all sorts of advanced stuff on YouTube. Just type in your guitar sage uh, finger picking. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Good questions, guys. Good questions. How do I set the picking of the acoustic guitar to make it sound good? How do I set the picking of the acoustic guitar to make it sound good? I'm not sure what that means, Samuel, but it sounds like uh, you're talking about finger picking. Watch the free series. There is a finger picking video on that. But watch them all. Watch all of those, okay? Okay, great. Bouncing back over to Facebook. Okay, okay. Okay, can you use a capo on an electric guitar? We've been over that one. Um, Okay, let me refresh this page because sometimes I gotta do that on, on Facebook. That's what it does. I don't know why they do that to me, but sometimes I gotta do that. I gotta refresh the page. Eric just joined from Wales, UK. Sorry I'm late. That's all right, I'm glad you're here. Thanks for coming, Dewey. Okay, what is the first scale to learn? I've hit a plateau in my guitar playing, bar chords and open chords. I'm getting bored. Dave, <clears throat> the two chords that you, the two scales that you need to know are the major scale and the pentatonic scale. On YouTube, search Your Guitar Sage Scale, 
and look for something that talks about the two scales that you got to know because I explain in detail why that is. Uh, just a quick oversight or quick overview of it is um, you need the major scale to understand music theory and you need the pentatonic scale because it's a really easy, uh, safe scale to use when improvising and it's a perfect one to start off blues, rock, jazz, or otherwise. Country doesn't matter, you know? Um, Roy is saying, my toy box is so nice. Yes, thank you, Roy. Uh, Roy is talking about my store that you can find at kit.com slash your guitar sage. It's my gear store. There's other ways to get to it as well. In the description of this video, you're going to see a link for that. Check that out, my friends. I've got all my recommendations for pedals, guitars, picks, capos, amps, uh, name it, all sorts of gadgets, cleaning bits for the guitar, so I forget sometimes the stuff that I have because um, I'm not, I just, I'm not so much a gearhead, but I like what I like and I post that stuff to my store. This is stuff that I own, stuff that I use, stuff that I recommend that's good, okay? So check it out. Um, I do have a store and, um, and, and check that out. So look in the description of this video, you'll find it. All right, uh, another question here. Do you have plans to use more guitar profiles in uh, USG, UGS, Unstoppable Guitar System? Yes, Al. So what Al's talking about, and in fact, um, I'm getting ready, Al, to release almost 400 new videos inside the Unstoppable Guitar System, and they all use guitar profiles. Uh, folks, for those that don't know what we're talking about, Guitar Pro is a program that uh, allows you to play tabs, literally play them on your computer to where you can hear them and uh, you can slow them down, you can loop different sections and what have you and it's a great way of learning guitar. It's, it's tab, but tab on steroids, okay? It's kind of like really, really cool stuff. And so uh, there's a few programs that can use those files, Guitar Pro and Tux Guitar are the two that uh, come to the top of my head that will allow you to do this, okay? And, uh, and this new program is called 365 Guitar, and I, I created it a, actually a few years ago, and it's been we've been just sitting it sitting on it for some time. Um, but nonetheless, it's basically 365 days of practice for you, with each day being something different, building on something from the last week. So there's uh, a finger picking day, there's a speed picking day, there's um, you know a th kind of a th picking but theory day and basically um, each day stacks up for 52 weeks you could literally start and not know anything about the guitar and that by the end of a year you're going to be insane on the instrument insane if you follow the protocol okay any of any advice um whoops any advice on what to play when playing with other guitar players other than soloing yes songs learn songs lots of songs everybody knows songs everybody wants to play songs and that's what I would suggest always. Learn some standards, you know, learn songs that everybody knows. How do you choose a pick? That's a great question. Well, you know, for acoustic guitar, I like the thinner picks because, uh, you know, I can strum many strings at once and it, it's not gonna pull out of my hands. Whereas a th the electric guitar, I'm using thicker picks because I'm doing more intricate work and I don't want that, that, um, difference okay i want it to be the same every single time so that's how i choose it thinner picks on the acoustic thicker on the electric and um and you go with what feels good to you you know can you upload videos on melody making on the guitar i have lots of videos on that my friend in fact i did a live broadcast not too long ago about adding melody uh to your playing so on youtube type in your guitar sage the pack on YouTube, type, open up another tab right now and type in your guitar sage melody, okay? Uh, Bonnie, 365 guitar is not out yet. It's in uh, Unstoppable Guitar System version two, which we're still working on. Some folks are in it already. Our, our, um, our war veterans are in it already, actually. We allowed them to get in there early to test drive it. Um, and but it's not, it's not out yet, at least for those that are in UGS-1. Soon, we're gonna have everybody migrated over, okay? If, if not already. If you are in, the, if you are in UGS-2, Unstoppable Guitar System 2, then yes, then you have access to it. I'm pretty sure. Uh, do you ever 
do you ever put on guitar player camps over uh, over a day or two? Elizabeth, I don't, but I've been talking about this for some time uh, with my team, and this is something I really, really want to do. So I'm really thinking about it, and it's probably going to be coming up soon. I say soon, like probably within a year. Uh, I would love to do it. Uh, what's a what's a good recommendation for a new song to learn? I've hit a wall and don't know what to learn. Uh, on my YouTube channel, there's a myriad of songs. So I don't know what you like and where your skill level's at. So that all depends, right? Uh, so go go to my YouTube channel and search for videos on there. And why I do it is uh, type in your guitar sage Elvis or your guitar sage Beatles or your guitar sage Doors or whatever your favorite group is, and then bam, you know what I'm saying? Um, could you name the nine chords again? Yeah, sure. E minor, G, A minor, C, D, B7, D minor, A minor, F. Did I say F? No. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Um, e major, A major as well. D major, D minor. So E minor. G major, A minor, C major, D major, D minor, A major, E major, and B7. Those are the seven. They're in the free course, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. Link's in the, in the description of this vid. Okay, great question. Uh, would you recommend, okay, what's the best way to come up with a melody to go along with the songs I write? Uh, sing, you know, sing melodies. That's the best way to do it, or not the best way. That's that's the way most people do it because chances are you're gonna sing all the notes that are in a specific key. You know, you know, and those are you're just naturally going to sing that because this is built into our brains from listening to music for so long, right? So that's one way to do it. Otherwise, you need to know the notes that are in a particular key, which correlate to the chords and you can find that in the very colorful PDF that's in the free course yourguitarsage.com slash 30. Okay um, just wanted to thank you for UGS I've been playing uh, for two years and was lost until I started your system about three weeks ago. Nice love that Mike thank you so much. Awesome. No, there was another one here. Uh, finger stretches for the guitar. Yes. Um, check out exercise number three in the free course, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. I think that one's in there. Exercise number one and two are in there, and those will help, but it's exercise number three. It's either, it's either in the free course or it may be in the unstoppable guitar system. But I have lots of videos for this. In fact, I just did one yesterday on five... Um, Dexterity exercises that are going to absolutely help the way you play guitar. And that one will be coming out soon, okay? Okay. Uh, I think we're going to... I'm going to answer just a couple more here, and then we're going to be heading out, my friends. Uh, when I bend a string up, my fingernail hits the string above it. Is that a bad, te is that bad technique, or am I bending too much? Yeah, you have to listen. Uh, bending is not just wildly... It's not just... Well, that was in pitch. That was one and a half steps up, but we're not randomly bending, we're bending to pitch. So for instance, if this is the note that we're going to, we're bending to a specific note. Make sense? So the bending too much, it needs to be like, you need to answer that. Like what note are you bending to? Uh, but it sounds like it's probably technique. And I have videos on it. Go to your guitar, uh, go to here on YouTube, type in your guitar sage bending, okay? Spoken tube, have you tried to collaborate with others? Spoken tube. Uh, no, but I'll have, um, I'll have Chris, my right hand man, look that up. Spoken tube, have you tried to collaborate with others? Oh, sorry. I, I see you're, you're, you're talking to somebody else in the stream there. Sorry, forget I'm, forget I'm here. Um, okay, a couple questions on Facebook and then we're gonna head out, my friends. Uh, last couple of questions here. What are your thoughts on the sequences and variation in terms of melody and licks? What are your thoughts on sequences and variation in terms of melodies and licks? I think it's super important, uh, you know, to be able to play something many different ways because 
a lot of times we say these different things. You know, w- w- there's many different ways to say something, and um, and to to have that ability is great. You know, so you need to practice the different variations of all. Um, great question, John. How do we migrate from UGS one to two? You don't. We will do it for you, sir. Uh, when the time comes. Uh, okay. How I play a chord. Play a chord, okay, and da da da. How do I find out what they are called? Uh, Paul is saying, how do I know what these chords are called? Okay, so you're saying you play um, and you're talking those two chords right there. Uh, you need to know, Paul. You need to know how chords are formed. You need to know uh, the notes that you're playing, and then how. That recipe, you're basically deconstructing a recipe. My wife does this all the time. We go out to eat, and she'll have a drink or a smoothie or a salad or not salad, but like a meal, and she'll go, hmm, I can taste this, this, that, and the other thing. And she'll name all the things. She'll go home, and she'll make it like so close to what we just ate. It's really uncanny. And um, and so you got to do the same thing. You got to know, number one, you got to know what the ingredients are. If you don't, you need to know. And you're going to start by doing that free course, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. That's where you're going to learn all these basic theory bits, and then you're going to be able to name all the notes and then be able to go, okay, so all those notes are, as you're going further, you're going to be saying um, you need to know about how to assemble the chords. Uh, if you're in the Unstoppable Guitar System, I have a whole section on this so that you can build thousands of chords with just knowing these little bits and pieces. Literally, increase your chord vocabulary without ever having played the chords. Pretty cool stuff, because you're, be, you're going to be using a little bit of math. I'm not good at math. It's just addition, okay? Um, so that's what you need to do, is you need to find out more about these chords. On, if you're not if you're not in the course and you never want to buy anything, that's totally fine, but obviously you're going to have to dig further. So on on YouTube, type in your Guitar Sage chords, and I'm sure I've got something on there for it. Sean, you're so welcome, my friend. All right, friends, um, here we go. Um, I'm out of here. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Really quickly before we go, uh, your last chance to share this after the broadcast. We're going to pick a winner. You're going to get an email from us, and um, and some lucky winner is going to win my DVD on the Nashville Number System and a CD for me. I'm going to sign both of them and mail them out to you. And uh, that's what we're going to be doing after the broadcast. Anybody who shared the video, we're going to pick one lucky winner from that. Also, if you haven't already, right now, friends, now's the time to do it. Open up another tab. Or as soon as I sign off here, the, the description in this video, yourguitarsage.com slash live. Click on that link. It's super easy to do to register you into winning this. We're not asking for your address or anything like that. I think it's like maybe first name and email. Because when you win, if you should win, we got to get in touch with you, right? We're not mind readers. Uh, so going to give this away, my beautiful uh, personal Fender Strat. Custom shop, 50s classic with custom wound pickups. It's my personal Stratocaster. I'm giving it away on November the 4th. If you'd like to win it or one of other thousands of dollars worth of uh, giveaways that we're going to be doing that day on November the 4th, then go to yourguitarsage.com slash live. Click that link. Sign up. My friends, I want to see you there. We're going to have a ton of people. It's going to be absolutely fun. We're going to have the chat roll going away. And... Um, and it's going to be super fun, okay? So join me for that. We're going to be talking about, uh, basically, it's, we're, we'll be talking on a couple of these things that we, that we talked about today, but then the rest of it, strumming and everything else to complete the whole model so that you can go and play millions of songs, okay? Literally. You've got what you need today here in regards to knowing the capo. I'm giving you the free system, yourguitarsage.com slash 30, teaching you about these nine essential chords, that's really all you need um, to be able to play. Now, to be able to strum and do all that stuff, that's going to be, I'm going to cover that in the seminar on November the 4th. So join me there, my friends. Click that link. I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining me here. Great questions. Thanks for hanging in there an hour and a half. Nice. All right, I'm out of here, and I'll see you in another video.